Hi everybody, I'm going to talk about estimates of the size of the Byzantine military using data from Byzantium and its army by Warren Treadgold. These are data points. They are not uh, selected from a continuous set of data that we possess. They are all that we have. They are all the documents talking about the size of the military in a given province or the pay in a given province and then that's extrapolated to all the others. It's a rigorous system which he's used although it's an extrapolation. It has its flaws. Furthermore it's a theoretical number. It doesn't seem to take into account army losses at all points in time. It doesn't seem to take into account units in training or deserted units or paper units. But perhaps the way of interpreting it is this is what the Byzantine military was wanting its army size to be at any given time. And the true figure will be lower than any of these data points because they're, they're essentially always playing catch up because there's a war on or something like that. Um, so let's just start walking you through it. The first data point is in 285. Uh, you can see that Diocletian takes over and he starts out with just over 250,000 troops in the Eastern Empire. Uh, over his 20 odd year reign, the number increases to about 315,000, which is to be expected. His, he's well known for having increased the size of the military, which was one of his tools for ending the crisis of the 3rd century. From here the numbers fluctuate a bit, and irregulars get introduced as well as professionals, up to about 370,000 under Justinian. Um, which is the highest data point there. Uh, he's also the second highest data point as well. Uh, <laughs> Justinian liked his wars. And whilst Anastasius before Justinian had saved a lot, Justinian spent a lot. The only problem was once Justinian had spent a lot, there wasn't then a lot of money. Uh, the empire really struggled to hold on to the territory which had gained because it had expanded its borders and not secured the provinces. They were damaged uh, from his wars. The tax revenues weren't much greater and uh, the empire started losing ground. The Lombards invaded Italy in 568. Well that high data point, the highest data point is 565. And the empire starts retracting. So you've got the Justinian's plague uh, which is really hitting the population hard. Um, potentially 40%, 50% casualty rates over the course of 20 years. There's a lot of wars with the Sasanian Persians. It's almost called the you know, Byzantine-Persian Hundred Years' War, the last great war of antiquity. Uh, they, they fought for about 70 years or out of 100. And the army really suffered, especially in the final stage, uh, which is the final Roman-Persian War of 602 to 628. And then, after this absolutely cataclysmic 26-year war, the uh, Arabs begin their conquests. And the Romans, for instance, lose possibly 30,000 soldiers at the Yarmouk in 636. So the data point for 641, uh, which is the only data point in the 7th century, is so much lower because the armies have been absolutely decimated again and again by uh, the trifecta of plague, overexertion and losing. Moving on, we see that the next data point is in uh, the late 700s. So the late 7th and early 8th century, uh, 
are kind of known as the Byzantine Dark Ages. There's not a lot known. That's why there are so few data points. Uh, there was a contraction in territory. Egypt was lost. North Africa was lost. But you can see the rise of the Byzantine theme system. So there's almost this switch between professionals and part-time soldiers. So the size of the military remained almost the same from 641 to the late 700s. But the state was so much smaller, but it had to use part-time soldiers. And the theme system, uh, thematic system, is something which I definitely want to come back to talking about at some other time. But you can see that it goes up. Uh, in the 840s, there's just slow territorial expansion. Uh, the next point, even higher, 959. And the increase in the number of professionals is actually quite profound at this stage, uh, if you think of it fractionally, because we're, that's very near to the zero bar. So the army's becoming more professional uh, as well. And it tells, so it's not, we don't have the data, but the next... 20 years after 959 are a time of absolute military conquest for the Byzantine. They are killing it in northern Syria, Cilicia, Crete, Cyprus, and then the Danube region of Bulgaria. It's a good time to be a Byzantine. It's the one of the times of fastest military expansion that they have. And finally, 1025. It's the data point at the very end of Basil II's reign. It's the only point with an error bar, which is what Treadgold provides. It's an extrapolation from the data from the 840s. And I think it tells that the the numbers seem too high. You know, the empire was larger, but it, uh, it doesn't seem to have been that much larger. And we'll actually get back to that when we look at the percentages. So now our graph has changed, and we're looking at the percentages of militarised personnel in the Byzantine state. Uh, it ranges between 2.4 and 1.2%. It's interesting that the graph is similar, as one might expect, to the total. Uh, it's almost matches, uh, one could argue. There's, oh, I, sh I should say, the, the population data is from Colin McEvity's uh, Atlas of Medieval Europe, as I believe it's called. Um, and the, the population data is even less accurate than the army data. So it, it's basically hypothetical. Uh, there's just a few interesting points. It, it's it's a low percentage of, of the total population, basically. In 641, the Byzantines have lost their military, but they haven't quite lost their land yet. Egypt, for instance, has taken in 642. So the military percentage is very low at that point. And it's like so un low, it's unstable, and territory is then lost. Remember, I'm talking about the Arab conquests so. here. Uh, and then the only other real point I want to uh, comment on is... A, the militarization in the 900s, and how that seems to have led to uh, success there, uh, where there's more military personnel and then there's more uh, soldiers because they can take more land. It, it's almost, I, I think it's quite conclusive there. Um, and then finally, going on to the data point from 1025, and it, the data point says 2.4%, of the population, I I don't buy it. I think this is where we see the weaknesses of the data. Um, none of the other data points were ever near that high, and uh, I think, uh, for instance, a, having a percentage of the population closer to 2% would fit reality probably a bit better. So maybe Basil II isn't, isn't all that he's cut out to be. Um, and that's all, folks. Cheers.